Okay, we're back. We played about, oh, and there's bottom by DJ Strong. We've had two three-pointers. That was one, and then Nick Ellis hit one while we were away. We had a, a technical difficulty. We're back with you. 15-9, to nine, Prairie Grove's largest lead of the game. Derek comes after back-to-back -back three pointers. And there was also an earthquake uh, in, in the gym here. The gentry player flopping down, <laughs> <laughs> he hitting flopped. the floor. Sainter picked up his first foul. I didn't actually see if Sainter earned that one or not. But, yeah, great start offensively to the quarter. Two three-point baskets to start off the quarter, man. That took a tie game to six-point game in a hurry, first minute and a half of the quarter. So good start for the Tigers. Now need to continue to build on this. Lynn, five guys for Prairie Grove with five foul, or, you know, with one foul yep, each right. to get our five fouls. So that would be the only thing positive about having five fouls at this point in the game is nobody has two as of this point. Gentry with just, well, they actually have three fouls. I missed one. Not sure who they called the third foul on for Gentry, but team fouls five to three right now. Boy, they're moving the ball. Derek, we just, we're doing a good job, I think. Oh, he did, boy, we were lucky he didn't keep driving there. Seen him, got in a, may have gotten a foul. Turn around, jump on the way. Nice job that time by number four, Jake Falkenberry. And now Sainer. A little full court pressure from Gentry for the first time. 15 to 11. <laughs> Galling and getting ready to check back in for the Tigers. Got some good minutes there out of Nick Ellis. Yeah, sure did. And I'm wondering if Galligan may be coming in for Sainer just for a minute or two to give the big man. Sainer's not been out of the game yet. Like you said, Ellis has given us some good minutes here. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to get Sainer out for a couple minutes. There's nice entry pass in there to, and you saw that coming. You could, yeah, yeah. You could just see that coming, Derek. They, they got him trapped in there. And now Ellis is going to come out. 15, 519, 15 to 11. Nick had three defenders, two from Gentry, and then he had the baseline working as a defender against him that time. Just got caught a little bit too far underneath the basket. Wasn't able to find a free man out there. Gavin Heltman is going to check in for DJ Strong. DJ hit the big three pointer. 15, 15 to go. 15 to 11. Boy, it's 15 time right now, Derek. Good possession. They're going to go jump uh, ball. Possession goes to the Pioneers. Tanner had pretty good position right there. I don't know if the gender – it's hard to go up over Tanner with the, as long arms as he's got. But I actually thought it was a good clean play. He, he may have not made any contact. Sometimes you do get it clean. But 5 5 to go. Good Boy. block. All right, here comes Heltimus. Gentry really trying to spread the floor and attack one-on-one. -on -one. There, Sainer gets it down yeah, low, low and an easy is. basket. Well, we can get it down there, Derek. That's going to be that's going to be some good points right there. 17-11. Yeah, the possession should be over when he gets the ball that deep. Three-pointer on the way, and that's just one of those long shots there. And four. Oh, now this time they're going to get they're going to get Julerat for the foul. It's his second, Lynn, and he's he's been off to a good start. He's got six points for Gentry. His second, the team fourth. He's going to stay in the ball game. And now Prairie Grove, an opportunity to stretch their lead. 17-11. Now Gentry, Gentry switches back to men. Excuse me, uh, man defense here. Excuse me, Lynn. And now, oh, good night. If they could have got it down to Galligan, he was by himself. Now you really got to, when you see pressure like that, you really got to attack it if you're an offensive player. You got to be strong with it, but can't play back on your heels. That's what Gentry wants you to do. Let's see if I Galligan guys. for three. No good. Rebound. Almost saved by Heltimus, but it's going to go to the Pioneers. 4-5 to good. go here in the first, the yeah. first half. Good, good hustle by Gavin right there, trying to go for that loose ball. Hey, Halfway through the second quarter. And now wide open three on the way. No good. Rebound. Oh, and good wow. Block. Galligan had a block party down there. Galligan's got three blocks in the game. And he really had another one, but the Heltham has got a foul <laughs> yeah, on Yeah, yeah. There's Big Saner. No good. Turnaround jumper. No good. 
And now quickly down the court comes Dane. Dane gives it up. And another block oh. by Galligan. <laughs> another block by Galligan. There's three on one. And now there's going to be, wow, and there's Purcell. No, Purcell on, back Tanner. up and in. Tanner Purcell, 19-8. And Gentry's going to call a timeout. Wow, did you see Galligan? Yeah, Galligan, he's just cleaning up the paint down there, owning the paint defensively, and it's a good thing because <laughs> Lynn Sainer was gassed on that possession. He was trying as hard as he could to get back. He just didn't have the energy. And then next thing you know, we're going back the other way, and Sainer's having to run back the other way. So good thing Gentry called a timeout. If nothing else, Dylan gets a little breather here. Yeah, it may not be a bad idea with 324. Dylan's got an eight-point lead. You don't want to lose it, but – or if you could sit sane or not having pick up that second, going into the second half with only one foul. 324 to go. Tigers lead in 19 to 11. It was 9 to 9 at the end of the first yeah. quarter, and so Prairie Grove's outscored Gentry 10 to 2 here in the second quarter. Purcell's been the man offensively, seven points leading the way for the Tigers. Saner with four, Strong and Ellis with three, and Galligan with two. And four block shots, and four which, block, is, and which has saved he, points. Yeah, on the yeah, other yeah end. absolutely. Yeah. I thought he was going to get fouled on the one, yeah. but man. We'll take it. 324 to go. Tigers leading 19 to 11. Winner of this game plays P Ridge tomorrow night in the semifinal of the district tournament. Late loser game tomorrow. And the loser season's over. Yep. Derek, all year long, I, as we've watched our boys, and I've enjoyed this team, and they've been fun to watch, and they play hard. And uh, but the one thing about this group. I just think we've seen we we've blown a couple of leads. No lead safe, I guess. Yeah, and I'm you say the one thing. I'm sure if you were asked Coach Edmiston, it'd be more than one thing that has <laughs> been kind of the thorn in the side. Uh, free throw shootings has got us at times, but yeah, extending leads, finishing games off has kind of been our theme all year. Finding a way to do that, and uh, we hope we're, we're able to do that at the right time. And this is definitely the right time. Nice job that time by Sainter to force that high shot and the miss. And the Tigers with the opportunity to take a double-digit lead. 2.50 to go here in the first half. Tigers have had a good quarter defensively. Sure have. Now they're going to get Sainter for three seconds. <laughs> And I'm, gonna, I'm going to say, Derek, someone in the Gentry cow got that call. Probably so. Yeah, you, because the, the, the refs crowd, don't call it. It was, it was the Gentry <laughs> sideline. Somebody got Somebody it. called it because the refs don't see it. <laughs> I rarely see that call. And, but it was a good call. Dylan had he'd, he'd set up shop there. Yeah, the frustrating thing is if, if Sainer's down low and he's in the paint for three seconds with the guy on his back, he's got to have the ball in his hands before that. Absolutely. Before it gets to that point. They're going to call DJ for, oh, my goodness. Well, it's another guy that hadn't picked up a foul yet. It's more, it's <laughs> six fouls now. So everybody's still got one foul, yep, right? Yeah, that's right. Everybody for the Tigers with one foul. Well, what well, would be nice to end this. We've got two minutes and ten seconds left. And that was more of almost just a hand check, Derek. I mean, it wasn't anything. Yeah, I thought. I think he was laying his elbow on him, and that was probably the big difference. But now. They'll with, let you do a little bit of that, Lynn, if they feel like that you're Julerat, no good. They feel like you're controlling the offensive player. They'll call that foul, and I guess they thought DJ was a little too physical there. Here comes some of the Farmington players. Derek, I, I got to make a comment about that. There it is inside, Big Saner. Oh, come on, Dylan. Oh, and blocked. Wow, Saner, yeah. won he's going to get three seconds again. He's going to get out of the lane. DJ Strong, no good. Saner with the ball. <laughs> Dylan just <laughs> – Dylan's frustrated right now. He didn't get the call he wanted. Yeah. And, and, uh, Looked like he took his frustration out on Layton. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going <laughs> to say last night, I've been really trying to get over and see Farming in this new gym and get a chance to yep. watch him play. So yep. last night I had the opportunity. I want to go over and see, to me, I, you know, I, I, I think a lot of those boys that play on the, the, the Farmington team, Jeremy Muller and uh, Max Spears and uh, – there's a good connection there, there with, yeah, with and, uh, especially your family. Yeah, and, and so and I, want, I wanted to go yeah. see them play. And, Derek, I got to tell you, the new gym is beautiful. It's yeah. nice. Um, and I made this comment to my daughter. I miss them in the conference, 
because it's almost like we need them and they need us. And, and I saw it last yeah. night. It's like yeah. they, they played a 5A game. They played Clarksville. Clarksville ended up winning the game. But it was just a different atmosphere. Yeah. And I was sitting there, you know, in the 5A, there's no district tournament. There's no regional tournament. That's right. You don't yeah. finish in the top four and your season's over. And yeah. so I really feel bad because I think Farmington in our conference this year would have been one of the top teams for sure. There's Galligan's shot on the way. No good. Boy, we got – there's the second foul on Smith. We got Derek – we got yeah, we got several chances that time of stretch yeah, we double did. digit. We but did, and that's unfortunate. Leighton picks up his second foul. Heltzum is going to check in, and now it's a one and one. That was literally as far away from the basket as you could foul somebody. Gentry's going to shoot a one and one here. Yeah, and, and to finish the thought on the part – the yeah. thing is I think that you know, I felt bad for him because, you know, this conference would have been a fun year for them. Uh, not saying they had a one or anything, but it would have been, you know, I think it would have been a very competitive thing. They would have had more fun in this conference yeah. than they're having in the 5A. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's for sure. But we wish them the best as they finish up their season here over the next uh, next week or so. They, well, they really lost that that uh, that true rivalry, too. Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. They, yeah they, they don't really they have, don't that. have one now. Yeah. And the first of the free throws is good. Leighton Smith, the first Prairie Grove player with two fouls, comes in a minute 32. I'd really like to see us just get out of here with no more fouls. Cause yep. And now second one's no good. And uh. the rebound. And a three-point play, Derek. That essentially was a three-point play. Sure was. Eight. We just had a chance to go from – from a, there we go. And now – Derek, we've really, this last 30 seconds has not gone well for the Tigers. No, it hasn't. We, and we talked about it, Liam. That's kind of a danger zone for us. Well, my goodness. They were trying to get, get a guy checked in. The referee almost gave it to him, even after he'd given the ball to the Gentry player. But it's a key part of the game here, this last minute. We need to finish strong, not let this game get any closer than what it is right now. 19-14. We had a chance to go up by 10, and now we're only up five, Derek. That's a, and we had... When we had that, we got the ball down there low and just not able to convert. And now, and Dylan picks up that second foul with 51.2 seconds. Just not a smart play that time by Dylan, Derek. Yeah, you, Dylan did a good job, Lynn, of going straight up at the beginning. But what but, he's got to do is anticipate that. It was a good spin move by the Gentry player. Then, but he's got to move his feet. But when you when you when you overextend, Derek, and you slap that arm down like you did, you're and you don't you don't block. You're going to get. The They'll foul. call it every time. Yeah, Dylan's got to be able to move laterally down there and and keep his hands up straight up in the air. Because as big as he is, he's just a, he's a big target. The refs the refs are looking for that. If you're a small guy, you can get away with that sometimes. And he missed both free throws, does Clark. So, Prairie Grove, boy, we are having a hard time, Derek. Oh, oh! Oh, look. There it now is. Now Galligan. And it's up and good, 21-14. What a block by Tanner Purcell. <laughs> Tanner Purcell with a big block. And then Gavin getting the control of himself, not trying to do it too fast. Yep. He saw him. But he waited until he got control and he got it down there to Galligan for the easy basket. And Parker didn't – he walked there. He walked. Parker, Parker didn't rush it, too. He made a nice head fake at yep. the basket and was able to finish. We need to get this ball past the timeline yeah, and finish yeah. this quarter out. Take this last shot of the quarter. And now Heltham is going to get by him, and now he's going to get a foul. That's going to be yeah, – that's, that's not a bad foul for Gentry, Lynn. They're not – we're not in the bonus yet. Cripps' first foul, team's fifth, so they're not going to. Gets it into Galligan. And now we're down to. Down to ten, eight seconds left now. Galligan, nice move, and he loses it. Oh, Helton. nice steal by Heltimus. Get in there. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Whoa! That would have been <laughs> huge. But, Derek, that's the end of the first half. Prairie Grove leading 21-14. It was 9-9 at the end of one quarter. Prairie Grove outscores them 12-5 in the second quarter. Derek, quick stats. We'll take a break. For the Tigers, Lynn Purcell still with seven points, leading all scores in the ballgame. Gallagher Sainer with four, Strong and Ellis, Ellis with three. Uh, the big thing for Prairie Grove, uh, Layton and Dylan picked up their second fouls right before the half ended, but still not in bad position uh, going into the half with a seven-point lead. The first few minutes of the third quarter are going to be critical. 
Well, that's going to do it. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back for the second half. Let's face it, life's moving along at a faster pace these days, and every now and again you find that one stop that allows you to catch your breath. That one stop that reminds you of the good old-fashioned values. The one stop that hand dips their ice creams and makes hamburgers to die for. The one stop that can furnish you with propane and pizza and everything in between. And they usually call you by your name and ask you about your family. Well, that place in Prairie Grove is Frederick's One Stop. Serving Prairie Grove since 1975. They say, Go Tigers! I wonder if Buck Lewis had any ideas to what he was starting when he sold his first Ford back in 1946. He was on the square in Fayetteville. Then Tom and Herb Lewis made the move to the current location on North College back in 1969. But through all those years, a Lewis has always been at the helm, and that tradition continues today. It's that kind of family value and heritage that makes Lewis Automotive the place to buy your next vehicle. Be it a Ford, Dodge, Chrysler, Ram, or Jeep, new or used, you can still find a Lewis standing behind every single deal. Award-winning service. Six locations on over a thousand vehicles it's amazing a lot has changed but the lewis heritage and tradition continues lewis automotive proudly serving northwest arkansas since 1946. If you're looking for America's most dependable, long-running, full-size truck, then you're looking for the Chevy Silverado. And you'll find a fantastic selection at Everett Chevrolet right off of I-49. But right now, they're excited about the totally redesigned Tahoe and Suburban. If you're looking to move your small team around, you can do it in style with Everett Chevrolet. And you'll also find two of America's favorite sports cars there, the Chevy Camaro and the Corvette Stingray. New or used, you'll find it a customer-friendly, family-owned Everett Chevrolet I-49 in Elm Springs Road in Springdale. You just bought that first home or maybe the first new car and you want it properly covered. Think shelter insurance and Mark Spence. Or maybe you just welcome into the world that little gift of a child. You want to make sure that their future is secure. Think Mark Spence and shelter insurance. Let's face it, you want someone local, someone that you know, someone that can be by your side when you need them to be there. Think Mark Spence and shelter insurance. Home, life, auto, RV, boat, motorcycle insurance. Think Mark Spence, your local shelter insurance agent. Call 846-2999. That's 846-2999. Shelter Insurance and Mark Spence proudly support Tiger Athletics and Activities. Life can come at you from a lot of different directions, and you need to be prepared with the proper insurance. Let John Galligan of the Galligan Insurance Alliance make sure that you, your loved ones, and your home, and all that's near and dear to you is properly covered. You see, the Galligan Insurance Alliance is an independent insurance agent and allows him the flexibility to shop the very best policy at the very best price, and this gives you the coverage and the peace of mind that you need at the rate that fits your budget. It's the best case scenario when it comes to covering all that is near and dear to you. Check them out on Facebook or drop by the website GalliganInsuranceAlliance.com and you can always call 479-282-0605, 479-282-0605, the Galligan Insurance Alliance. Love God, love others, serve others. The simple motto of Prairie Grove Christian Church. Whether supporting mission in Africa, doing mission work in Cambodia, Haiti, building in Texas, or fun for the entire family with board basketball and cheerleading, you'll find our members seeking to show love for God's love for our members. If you are looking for a church home, we invite you to experience GCC. We have convenient service times on Sunday from 9 to 10 p.m. We have a ministry children and teens. Grove serving Western Washington County and beyond. Love God, love others, serve others. Grove Christian Church. 
For over 100 years, the Lugan Fuel name has served the area of Prairie Grove with honor and integrity in a family's most dire time. Four generations of excellence in service. All aspects of caring for your loved one are handled with tender care as well as with the honor and dignity they deserve. The type of service, the monument, every single aspect is handled with that special Lugan Fuel care, including the opportunity to work with them on pre-planning. If you have any questions, please call 846-2141. That's 846-2141. Lloyd Wayne Lugan Fuel. Stacy Lugenbuehl, J.C. Dobbs, or Dwayne Cunningham stand ready to continue that Lugenbuehl tradition. For more information, they invite you to visit their website, Lugenbuehl.com. Prairie Grove All Sports Booster Club represents our kids' sporting events grades K-12. Like us on Facebook and follow us at Prairie Grove Tigers. If you'd be interested in helping out the sports teams with a monetary donation, please visit their website at pgboosterclub.com. Okay, we're back for the second half. Prairie Grove gets the ball to start the second half. 21-14 as we go into the second half, Derek. Again, the winner will play P. Ridge tomorrow night, semifinals district, the loser, and the season is over. So. Hoping the Tigers can extend their season just a little longer. Nice pass inside. That was a push. And a chance for an and one. Great offensive possession there. It took 20 seconds, but the Tigers got exactly the look they wanted. Great finish by Tanner inside. We're Second lucky they foul didn't call the, We're lucky they didn't call the foul when I called it because it would have been on the <laughs> floor. This way we get the chance with and one and Purcell. Misses his first free throw, is three or four from the line, 23-14. Tanner's the only guy that's been to the line for the Tigers tonight. Gentry three out of seven at the free throw line in the first half. Nice little move. Nice take that time. Barker, that was a nice take. Yeah, nice set play coming out of the halftime break for Gentry as well. 
Gentry comes out, shows pressure again. Good job by the Tigers handling it. Now you got to be able to set up and just run your offense right here. Well, we're fortunate Dylan didn't pick up that third foul there. Yeah, it was a Wade smart Parker. play. Three-pointer, no good, but Big Saner looking for the rebound. And Gentry gets the rebound. They're on the attack again. Here comes Barker. He takes it all the way, and it's a five-point lead. 23-18. Lynn Barker did not score in the first half. He's come out, had two aggressive takes to the basket, two layup finishes at the rim. And from what I hear, he's their leading scorer, Lynn. So he's one of those guys we don't want him to get going. And there's Purcell. Nice, nice job. Nice give that time from Galligan, and it's 25-18. Back to seven-point lead, 26-20 to go here in the third quarter. Yeah, Gentry over-pursued there defensively. Tanner made him pay with that back cut, and like you said, nice pass by Galligan. You see Barker, he's trying to make things happen, a little more aggressive. Big three-pointer that time. That's Blake Boyd, and it's a four-point lead. Gentry off to a good offensive start in this quarter, Derek. And now there's Purcell, yeah, there we, we got go. three on one. And now nice step, and oh. a chance for <laughs> and one. Ho, ho, ho. I thought Tanner was going to blow it, Lynn. <laughs> I thought he had uh, whoever we was had down there. It was three on one. I thought, yeah, he's going to pass. He's going to pass. No, I'll just take it myself. Tanner, 13 points, leading all scores, and that's the third foul on Cripps. So he's the first player in the ball game to pick up three fouls. And Purcell knocks it down. Wait, what's – they going to give him another shot? No, oh, there we okay. go. I'm sorry to say, what's going hey, on? Hey, we'll take it if they're going to give it to us. <laughs> Purcell, four or five from the line. Now, stretch leads back. It was at seven. At, man, look at this, Derek. Both teams have scored seven points in yeah. the first two minutes. Both teams really made some nice adjustments offensively at the halftime, and now we got to adjust defensively on this end. Dylan's got to be careful. In that yes, he does, right especially there. that far away from the basket. There's no need to get too aggressive right there. Tough shot. Well, that's the rebound you got to get. We we gave it up, Derek. Yep. That's the rebound you got to get. Yeah, we had two nope. guys uh, in position to get it, and I think that each one of them thought the other was going to go for it. Got to communicate right there and make sure you come up with that ball. 28-21, Tigers lead. Had a seven-point lead at half, still at seven points. <laughs> Game's going to be a fight to the finish, Derek. You can see this already. Yeah, let – Love to see us get this into a double-digit lead going into the final quarter. Nice move and a chance for an and one. Nice that job by Cole Cripps. That's going to be Galligan's second. Oh, Purcell, that's his second. His second as well. Yep. We've got to make sure, Lynn, that we're doing a good job off that initial. Gentry's just looking to catch the ball make a, a shoulder fake and attack us. We've got to do a good job of closing out under control and not leaving our teammates exposed. And another three-point play. Ten points already for Gentry in the first three minutes and another turnover by the Tigers. The pressure is getting to him a little bit. And he walked. No, uh, not called. Three seconds in the lane possibly, no. Guys got to sit down and play good defense one-on-one. -on -one. Not, do, nice not doing it right now. And that seven-point lead is quickly down to two. And will we get a break there, Derek? We got a break. Didn't yeah. look like a foul to me. I'm not trying to be, <laughs> be against our team. I'm grateful, but we got a little bit of a break on that one. Well, hey, Parker had <laughs> – they were closing quickly on him, that's for sure. They call that on. Land number two. Okay, Dane. This that Dane's foul. first. Yep. 4.30 to go, and this has been a good quarter for Gentry so far. Leighton Smith, oh, he tried to take off before he got it, Derek. Yeah, here's where we, where the experience of, of playing in a regional, playing in a state last year, hopefully comes in handy. We just got to keep our wits about us, continue to Gallican execute. for three. No good. Rebound goes to Gentry, and they can tie it up on this possession. Here comes Cripps. He's been the man in this quarter. Galligan's going to foul. 
Is that his third? Second, second foul, foul Liam, second foul. So now we've got four starters, Smith, Sainter, Purcell, Galligan, each with two fouls. But now Gentry with a chance to tie the game here, Derek. They've really come out in this quarter. We're not even halfway through it. Well, Lynn, you look at it this way. Gentry scored 14 points in the entire first and half. 14 points in with the this first free throw, four, 14 first four points. Four minutes of this yeah. quarter, Derek. Four minutes in the quarter, and they've doubled their point production. Our, our guys have uh, said it before. They've just got to keep your man in front of you. And when one guy gets by you, that uh, breaks down your whole defense, really leaves you in a bad position. Yeah. Second shot on the way, and it's a tie ball game. We were tied at the end of the first quarter, Derek, and we we're tied there again. We go. The pressure has, they've had some turnovers on this pressure that the uh, full court press has been going on. And, and now we should break this this time. We get it over. I say that, now we get it over. Purcell looking inside for Sainer. Nice pick up there by the Pioneers. Oh, there's Galligan, he was alone. Boy, the yeah. defensive pressure is really doing well right now. A nice follow-up that time, and Gentry takes the lead. Nice follow-up that time by Jake Falkenberry. It's 30-28 Gentry, and they're excited. This is the same Gentry team, Derek, that beat P. Ridge, who finished Try it. second. That's right. This is the same yeah. team that really took – Took it to grab it last night, and now got a nice pass, and it's going to be a Finish foul. that. Good offense right there. That was a good job of keeping your, keeping a level head. You break that pressure. The crowd was into it. You just keep running your offense. You get a great look right there at the basket. The momentum has definitely swung in this corner. Oh, sure. Yeah. Way. I mean, Prairie Grove, largest lead has been nine points. They're up 23-14. Uh, never got it to double digit. And now they're down one with Galligan a chance to tie the game. 321 to go here in the third quarter. And this shot's on the way by Galligan. And he ties it up. We're all tied up at 30. Galligan, the first free throw made besides Purcell. Now, break down, play some solid defense right here. Keep your man in front of you. Take a little pride in what you're doing individually, defensively, and you're you see right there, Purcell had to come over and help on that. Nice. And see their, their catch up, if you think about it, they caught up when they were making those transition baskets. Yeah, sure not, did. They, they weren't setting up their offense. Nice take that. Oh, there's yeah, be another there foul. Now that's five. This is actually, you know, they didn't get, ever get in the bonus now, Derek. They've got five fouls yeah. here in the third quarter, but they've been playing much more aggressive with the defensive side. Yeah, they really the have. Side. I'd, li I'd like, man, it seems like everybody for, for Gentry's also got one or two fouls. Nobody other than Cripps, he's got three fouls. He's been dangerous for him, too. Purcell for three. No good. Big Sainter with a rebound and back up. And, and a chance for There we go. Play. Thirty-two, thirty. Sainter needs to knock this one down. Need to stretch this thing back out. We could be shooting a lot of free throws. And Sainter completes oh the old-fashioned three. It's thirty-three, thirty. All right. It all starts on the defensive end, though. At this point, Lynn, we just got to continue to get stops every time. We've had quite a few and ones tonight. Yeah, we have. I'm gonna count that up while we're looking at it. Nice take, but no good. Balkenberry went up. Now, big, big Sainter taking through. And now oh, there's there we Galligan. go. Nice. nice. Give. Nice. And the Tigers back up 35-30. Just nice like that. Job. Yep. Great offense transition there. But you, you can't relax, Lynn. Here comes Gentry right, right back, back at you. And that's their, you know what, they're trying to get down there, and that's really been their best offense yeah. is what they did right there, trying yeah. to beat us back or, or off of the, the press. Well, if you can make Sainer run the floor so many times, he's going to wear down eventually. And Gentry's trying to get their points before Sainer gets down there, which I don't blame him. There's G uh, Gavin Heltimus. Oh, Bottom! Heltimus. Bottom! Hey! Big response right there, Lynn. 10-0 run here for yep. the Tigers. 
Derek, we now have a large lead than we did at halftime, and that was after the great gentry start. No, well, we didn't get rattled, Lynn. And, and a foul. No, that's on the floor. That, that's on the floor, guys. Yeah, they're going to call it on the floor. <laughs> okay. They Nick get. Ellis is going to come in. I hope he comes in for Saner here, Derek. He is. So with a minute and a half, we really need to play well this last minute and yep. a half. Yep. Saner with only two fouls. Gonna well, really and, and really, that's not, nothing to take away from Saner, but defensively, just man to man, we match up just a little bit better with him out. You know, we don't we lose a lot offensively. We lose a lot defensive rebounding wise, but as far as size match up here and able to defend on the perimeter. We might have a better option right here with Ellis. And it gives Saner some rest. Wide open shot, three point on the way, no good. Galligan nice. with a big rebound. Galligan playing real well tonight, Lynn. Well, Derek, the first half of this quarter <laughs> went to <laughs> Gentry and now Prairie Grove doing well. Nice take, he's gonna be on the floor, but he's gonna go for one and one. One and one, yep. yep. 103 to go here in the third, Tigers back up 38-30. Now they're calling him, they were calling him Jula Rad earlier, now I think it's Jula Rowe. Well, <laughs> and you that's know. what I called him, I think, when we played <laughs> on the first time. But uh, so if anybody from Gentry's watching, I mispronounced <laughs> it. Forgive me. That's his third foul, though. And now Purcell with a one and one. Free throws could be very critical. Prairie Grove in the bonus. Gentry is not, and it rolls out. And now we're down to a minute to go. We need to play really good defense this last minute. Smart, we need to play really smart. No one needs to pick up a, a necessary foul. Good nice up. job of Purcell keeping him in front. And Good a nice rebound, rebound by Ellis. Ellis. Now be strong with it, Nick. And he's going to get go. a foul, he's going to go to the line. There you go. And he was strong. Derek, you called it. He yeah, was he sure was. Look how far away we're going to get a shot. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, a, that's a, essentially an 80-foot shot. Yeah, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Second foul on Hockenberry. Excellent job by Nick. And now you got to expect every time you get a defensive rebound like that, you're going to have pressure, Lynn. You know, Gentry's playing for their season just as we're playing for ours. You just got to be extra strong, and that was a great job by Nick. Nick Ellis, no good. So Come on, free guys. throws. We've given four <laughs> points up down here, Derek. Yeah, we potentially four points at the free throw line in the last two trips. Big three-pointer on the way, no good. Rebound goes to Ellis again, and now – here comes Heltimus. Nice take. There and it's go. in. And for the first time, Derek, with 20 seconds left, we got a 10 point lead, a double digit lead. And Derek, this was after, this is a 12 point run. Yeah, it's 12 0 run. 12 run, 12 0 run still going on. As well as Gentry played to start this third quarter. Ah, dag gum it. We gotta, gotta cut down those attacking lanes for Gentry. Who they call that on? They called it on DJ Strong chance for a three-point play. DJ's third foul as well. This is second. They got him down as two. Well, I may be wrong. I hope I am on that. Oh, they, they just changed it, Lynn. They were a little okay. late changing it. All right. 8.6 seconds, 40 to 32. Jula Rad on the free throw line. And it's good. Back down to – we had a seven-point lead to start this quarter, Derek. It's been – we had a 12-0 run. Gentry had an incredible run. They took a lead there. They were up 30 to 28. You know what, here, Derek, we don't even have to get it past the line, although we do now. Might as well go with it. Five seconds. I mean, I think the ball was deflected right there, Lynn. I don't think Tanner lost control of it. I think the Gentry player made a nice defensive play there, but with two seconds here, you sure don't want to foul right here if you're Prairie Grove. Want to make Gentry go the length of the floor and throw something up. Oh, look at that. Shoot that. Oh, Tanner, you had time. You had time. Well, Derek, <laughs> as we end the quarter, still with us, we were up 21-14. <laughs> a nine, what was We had more points in this quarter than the entire first quarter so, combined, Lynn. 19-19. <laughs> <laughs> but we're even to where we were at halftime, so we didn't lose. Although we lost the lead in that quarter, we overall we didn't lose any ground. Uh, you just got to continue to keep playing and try to finish this thing out. Gentry's going to come with everything they have here the final eight minutes of the game. Well, they're going to press. They know it's all on the line right yeah, here. Sure. And on top of that, Derek, they get the possession arrow, so they'll get the ball to start the quarter. Yep. And uh, this has been 
you know, this has been an Achilles heel for us this year. We've sure had teams has. in the fourth quarter and have not closed teams out this year. Hopefully tonight, Derek, we can do it to extend our season the, the into one, next week. Yeah, good point. The one thing I would say, though, is, Lynn, when we've been in these close games against uh, – Minus Huntsville, minus P Ridge in the conference, we found ways to win those ball games, and uh, we were in two close ones uh, with Gentry. As a matter of fact, one just a couple weeks ago found a way to win that game. Didn't play our best ball, but found a way to win a close game. This has the feel that it's going to be another close game all the way down to the wire. We're going to be shooting a lot of free throws potentially in this quarter. It's going to be important for us to step up and hit those free throws. And then, you know, and then Berryville, just, uh, you know, on senior night, Derek, we all, we were in the same situation. Yeah. The lead kind of lost it, able to hang on. And now. Lynn we're, Lynn, we're seven out of nine at the free throw line, but those two misses were one and one. Front end is a one and one. But seven to ten. had Purcell four. missed another free throw. When we yeah, you're right. Throw. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Seven to ten. Yeah. Nice job. It's the same Short. play Gentry ran coming out of the half. Now the Tigers back on the attack. Leighton Smith in the game. Oh, we thought about a long No, three. late, no. <laughs> There's Sainer. No, no good. Sainer follow follow up. Yeah, follow Oh, and, and we get up. the ball back, Derek. We got a break right there. Got a there. break there. Sainer Fourth. needs to follow that. <laughs> yeah. Coach Ed's telling him right there, get. You know, Sainer, he shot that just falling away just a little bit, Lynn. He's so big and strong, he never needs to be shooting fadeaway jumpers. He needs to go right at the rim. Three-pointer, no good by Smith. Uh-oh, Coach Ed did not like that choice. Yeah, a little, little quick of a shot. He wants to pound the ball inside. No, oh, goodness, nice. guys. Too easy. And now that gives them a chance to set up their press defense. And now Purcell. Boy, wow, no foul. And now Tiger's going to spread the floor here, run motion offense. Oh, my goodness. There you go. Well, we have one student being involved in the game up here, Lynn. <laughs> yeah, he is. Well, that, okay. Yeah, I did. Gavin knew he was supposed to be shooting free throws there. He's about the only one on the floor that realized it. Five-point lead for the Tigers, 6.55 to go in the ball game. We've missed front ends 1-1. One, one. We've left four points on the board, yeah. Derek. We don't need to leave any more. Heltimus shot on the way. Good. Oh, boy, by Gavin. Gavin Gavin's played solid off the bench tonight, Lynn. Got a boy. Back to the seven point lead. 42 35, 650 to go in the ball game. Seven points for, for Gavin on the night. Barker. That's better defense there by Leighton, keeping Barker in front of him. They're going to call. Call Gavin on that? No. That was I guess Sainer on Sainer. it. Okay. Sainer does not. He doesn't need to be guarding that. that. Yeah, he just needs to back basket. off a little bit. I understand his man may, may be able yeah, to shoot here. threes, but if he hits threes, you live with those. You can't pick up fouls that far away from the basket. Uh, good defense there by the Tigers. Good rebound by Sainer. Tough Sainer, shot. Sainer with three fouls. And now Tigers need to run a little clock to get this thing down. Yeah, you're right. This is where we just need to take our time, get the exact look we want. Sainer misses. Maybe shot a little too quick. And now it's going to be a foul on Leighton Smith. That's his third. 6.15 to go. And now the Tigers are getting close to being in the, yeah, the yeah. bonus. Or Gentry. Now, well, Gentry will be in the bonus from here on out. Yep. At least the Tigers are shooting two from we'll here We'll be shooting out. two. Gentry will be shooting one and one on the next Tiger foul, on a non-shooting foul. Third foul for Smith. Saner's got three. DJ Strong has three as well. For Gentry, Julerat and Cripps each have three. Nobody with more than that on the floor. And there's Barker. He's wanting that three. He saw it. No good. Rebound goes to Galligan. So hard to see guys running down the floor. Just a nice, strong rebound by Galligan. Good outlet pass. We got a break again, Derek. They, Barker, 
has really played well in this second half, both offensively and defensively. He's a senior. Yeah, he's, he's come out really more aggressively. Coach Ed talked about that timeout. I think it's a smart timeout by Coach Ed. He really needs to kind of set up what they're going to do from here on out. It's his second timeout. He's got yep. three left. Maybe the old the old movie Hoosiers Lynn where you say four passes before any shot's taken. <laughs> and that shot better be a good one, you know. Uh, but, yeah, at this point, you don't want to get too conservative here because there's, there's still too much time left in the ball game. But what you want to make sure you do is you're getting good shots. And quick shots, unless they're wide open, are not going to be good shots for us. Need to continue to run the offense, get the shots that we want. Now, having said that, Dylan's had a couple close, you know, in the paint shots, just not been able to but finish. But to your point, he's but falling away. He's falling away yeah, a little bit. Yeah. He's got to go strong to it. And he's, you know, he's got to play through the contact. He's probably getting fouled half the times he catches the ball down there. If but he's got to be through, really if strong. If he goes through it, they'll call it. Yeah, yeah, if you're right. If he play through yeah. it, not every time, but he'll yeah, get the majority yeah. of those calls. Yeah, Dylan's only shot one free throw tonight. I think Prairie Grove has three times. There it is. And Come Saint. on, Dylan. Come on, Dylan. Good <laughs> night. He's getting – I mean, I, he got foul first. <laughs> yeah, he there. did. But that's what I was talking about, and, and you made a good point. He went to the basket that time. But he's getting hit, and he, he's just got to – you're going to get frustrated at times. You just got to play through it, do the best you can with it. I think Prairie Grove's got three timeouts left, and I believe Gentry either has two or three. I wasn't tracking that, but well, boy, we've missed our last three free throws, Lynn. Oh well, no, because the health has made two. Oh, they, that's but, right. But, yeah, but yeah. we 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 shot really well free throws in the first half, yeah. and there in the second half we missed quite a few, and Sainter miss makes that one, so it's 43-35, eight-point lead with five minutes and 35 seconds to go in the game. Tigers need to hang on just a little bit longer to extend that season another week. Well, you saw the first four minutes of the second half, how quickly Gentry can get it going. And there's a three-pointer by Julerat. No good. Rebound. Nice job by Heltimus. Heltimus gets it over the line, and now he walked. Boy, and you called it, Lynn. It's a great job by Gavin getting the rebound and pushing. And, and to Gavin's credit, we've seen him at, at times this year go a little bit too far. That time he pulled up. I don't know if he actually walked right there, but if you come to a jump stop, you won't get called on that. That'll be something Gavin learns. Just got to keep playing hard. Get that ball. Three-pointer, no good. Rebound goes to Galligan, and he gets it in the hands. And there is Leighton Smith all alone. He waits. <laughs> wow. How got did to we finish, miss that? guys. How did we miss that, Derek? You, you can't double clutch layups, Lynn. You just got to go strong. It's a great release by Layton to get open. Three-pointer on the way. No good. Rebound goes to Layton Good board. Smith. Good board. Now, Gentry, if we can get back and set up defense, Derek, they're not getting great shots. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and then right now they're cold, but while they're not hitting shots, we got to be making some on the other end. Yeah, we need to stretch this lead out. Exactly right. Run some time here, guys. Run a little. Nice there. pass. Nice take. No good. Golly. It's about three baskets right around the rim. We have not been able to convert. And now good job by Sainer that time. Excellent job by Dylan. Now looks like DJ Strong is going to check in. And it, and it looks like Lynn Gentry's wearing down a little bit. We got <laughs> We've got to make them pay. I, if Nate Lake Smith had taken a <laughs> shot and missed it, I think Coach Ed would have just went nuts there. I, I think I might have taken him out of the game at that point. <laughs> <laughs> Three fifty to go. Layton's just like he likes toying with us up here. Forty-three thirty-five. Lead's never been more than. Let's see. We got a ten. Point, ten. I ten think point that's lead. it. Yep. Yeah. Well, four fouls for Gillerat, so he's the only player. In the game with four fouls. And God, there's another on, missed Tanner. free throw. Tanner's got 16 points, leading all scorers in the ball game. But Drew two, three, he, he's a junior, so he's back next year. The Gentry's got a pretty solid team coming Yeah, they, they, they've had some good junior high teams in the past recent years. They just hadn't been able to put it together on the high school level. 44-35. Tanner now five out of eight at the free throw line. 3.45 to go in the game. Long three by Julerat. He knocks it down. And a timeout's going to be called. He just cuts the lead to six. 
just like that, Derek, it becomes a two possession two game. Two possession game. And that time, to Dylan's credit, Lynn, he, he ended up on Jillerat somehow. Um, but he contested that shot, but he didn't get too close. And if they make shots with a 6 7 hand in their face, yeah, they make shots. Yeah. But that was good defense by Dylan that time. And did Gentry call that timeout, Lynn? Yeah. I believe they did. I think they're down to two timeouts. Yeah, it says it on the scoreboard. So two timeouts left for Gentry, three for the Tigers. Still a lot of time left in the ballgame. Remind you, we'll be coming to you tomorrow night with the girls. They will be playing Berryville tomorrow night, Prairie Grove, Berryville girls at 7 o'clock. If our boys hang on to this six-point lead and win tonight, they will face P. Ridge, and that game will come to you right after that at 8.30 tomorrow night. So hopefully Derek will be doing this Double header tomorrow, tomorrow double, yeah. Double header tomorrow yeah. night. And hopefully do a double header on Saturday night as well. Well, if nothing else, both teams with a win tonight for the Tigers, both teams, girls and boys, would be playing next week with a chance to go to the state tournament. Lynn, the free throw situation here, Gentry 7 out of 11, Tigers 11 out of 15. But those two front end one and one misses uh, took away a couple extra points that we could have had potentially at the, on those trips. But still a pretty good overall percentage just – 11 out of 15. I'm not a mathematician, but that's a pretty good percentage. You can live with that. If you're a Tiger player, you've got to understand. He calls a timeout. Yeah, probably a good good use of a timeout. you got to understand pressure is going to be in your face the rest of this ball game. And here's what I would do, Derek. I mean, I think one of the things is if you get it and Julerat's on you, go at him. Because yeah, he, he cannot his, foul. I mean, yeah. they've got yeah. people on the bench that can replace him. they got yeah. players that can play, and they can play without him. Yeah. But he just hit a big three, and, 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 and he can be dangerous. So that's well. not a bad thing to see him uh, exit the game. Yeah, that's a, a really good point. He's their leading scorer tonight with 12 points, the only guy they've got in double figures at this point. You're exactly right. We'll, we'll have to see who he's guarding on the offensive end and see if the Tigers look to attack that a little bit. I have a feeling that the Tigers, if they can break the, the pressure, are going to find a way to go back inside to Sainer, regardless of where Jillerat is on the floor. But that's something to keep an eye on, is if you can find number 24 for Gentry in a one-on-one -on -one situation or get him out of position, you can get him out of the game with one foul. Well, Derek, we've done a good job. We've gone. They've been at the six foul mark to go into bonus for quite a while. Yeah. And yeah. we've been able to go a couple minutes and not. Now I'm not. I'm, as soon as I say that, we'll turn around and give <laughs> them a, a free throw. But at least we've done a. a you know, they've had an opportunity to have that yeah. for a while, and that's gone our way. Now we're going to shoot two free throws the rest of the way. and uh, We don't have anybody with four fouls. you got Smith, Sainer, and Strong. And DJ's back into the game, each with three fouls. And now we got to get it in this time. And he gets it in to Purcell. And you got five seconds to get it across. Yeah, we got there it. We go. Yeah, good shot. And DJ's open. And now Tigers get it. Ooh, DJ. Nice, nice. And there we go. Nice execution that time, Derek. Everybody did a nice job. Man, that was a great job. Gentry got caught out of position a little bit. Excellent job coming out of the timeout, breaking the press, and then finishing off the press. Been a little bit of a problem for us. And that's the fifth foul on Jillerat, Lynn. That's huge. That's big. So Jillerat's going to have to go. Now, Derek, I want to ask a question because I used I noticed coaches used this. I wonder if they yeah. changed the rule. You used to when your player fouled out, you have yeah. a minute to, to bring them in. I used to see coaches bring their players over yeah, yeah. and kind of use it as a timeout, and I don't see that happening. You can do anymore. that, but I think one of the reasons why, Lynn, is it's now, I think, 30 seconds that the coach has to substitute in. Okay. So they've lowered that. It's hard to get your guys over there and get them anything constructive in that 30-second time. Okay, here we go. Sainer chance for the three, no good, and another missed free throw for the Tigers. Eight-point lead, three minutes, 20 seconds to go in the game. Aww. And now we just got to go the other way. DJ Strong picks up his fourth foul. Now you, you've got to keep your guy in front of you. Just cannot let guys go to the basket that easily, Lynn. And this gives them a chance again to set up their defensive pressure. This free throw is good, and it's back down to five-point lead. They just traded us three points for two. They'll take that every time. And there's Purcell, gets it into Purcell. And now he's got it to Sainer. 
And now we're back in business on the offensive end. 3-10 to go in the game. Well, Gentry may be tired from the game last night. Nice take. Oh, nice. Now he had a chance for an and one. Oh, Purcell made that look easy. Derek oh, man, look he easy. did. Slick move behind the back. Finger roll. George Gervin style at the rim. He, he looked old school, but he made <laughs> he it look easy and smooth. Oh, that's a f second foul there on, on Barker. Barker. That was the one I missed early in the first half. I couldn't find that missing foul. It was Barker, so he's got two fouls. 48-41. We missed a lot of free throws down the stretch there. Yes. I think you missed another one because I, I was counting them in my head. You might have missed another. <laughs> I think we missed four and five. <laughs> And there he knocks that one down. Are Back you to questioning my stat-keeping skills, uh, Lynn? No, not your you skills. You know me too well. No, no, not your skills. <laughs> not your skills. Three minutes to go in the game. Tigers up by eight. 20, well, 20 points for Purcell tonight. And now, and whoa, who's going to get that one? I hope it's Galligan because I don't want big, big Saner. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's Galligan. Galligan. That's yep. his third. His well, this is the same thing that happened to us. I hate to bring up the Pea Ridge game, Ugh. but but Lynn, we had the lead and the clock kept stopping because we kept fouling them. And we were scoring points, but it was like we were getting one and they were getting two, yeah. or you know, we weren't on the on the positive we, end of that. We need to run off a good minute. <laughs> yeah, we need and, and we we need to make it harder for Gentry to get to the basket uncontested that way, the way they've done the past few times down the floor. Back to a six-point lead, 49-43. Gets it into Leighton Smith. Back over to Galligan. Oh, no. oh. oh, goodness gracious, guys. And Gentry comes up with it. I, I tell I mean, you what, I thought Galligan got pushed there, Derek. He, he did. Get the foul. Yeah, he did. And now – I tell you what, Gentry brought fans today, Derek. I they tell did, you, they, yeah. They're, they're here in full force. Wally Dane to shoot, 241 to go. Tigers up by six. Dane misses Short the first there. One. Now you got to block out and rebound here if you're, well, any of those four guys in the white jerseys down there. All four of them have block out responsibilities on this free throw. Second one by Dane. This one is good. Back to, it's a five-point lead, 49. Now gets it to Saner. And now we got it over the timeline. And oh no, not not that pass. No. Nope. Not that pass, Derek. This Can't. is almost identical to P Ridge. We're yeah, doing the same thing. I hated to bring it up, but you can see it. They're Gentry scoring all their points. Oh, he walked. Big rebound there. Now, now run some clock, guys. Calm yourselves down, Tigers. Down to a minute and 50 to go. Now this is the kind of possession we needed as far as clockwise. Now we need to end it. There you and go. Foul. There you go. And now a chance for Purcell. He's got two shots. They called that on. I think they're calling the foul on Purcell, Derek. No way. No way. No, they got it wrong. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. They'll say, my goodness. Here's Purcell with first, and it's good. Purcell puts the Prairie Grove back up by six. 151 to go in the game. Tanner, 21 points tonight. Wow. Played a solid game, really solid game. And I like this substitution. Gavin has played played really solid minutes right here. He's just got to play under control, run the offense here. DJ's done a nice job as well. Nice job three, by Tanner getting those two free throws in. Three possession game with a minute and 45 to go. Prairie Grove up by seven. We've been up by seven a lot. Three-pointer on the way by Barker. That one's no good. Rebound goes uh, to Gentry. Get that board, fellas. And there we go. 
And now, Coach Price gonna take a timeout. He's only got one left with a minute 37 to go, 51-46. Still too much time here, <laughs> Lynn, but that was a great offensive possession by the Tigers the last time. They withstood the pressure, they got it across half court, they ran clock, and they got points at the end of the, in the, end of the possession. Good job, definitely, but on the defensive side, Derek, we get a rebound there, and we're and we really yeah, can get. Yeah. It's either you're going to go right back to the line, or you're going to run about 30 seconds off yep, the clock. So yep. well, that was not a a good defensive end because we did a good job defensively, but then we didn't box out. Yep. And Gentry's almost to the point where if we get that rebound, they almost have to foul us. Now they're at the point, Lynn, where they can come out pressure us in the full court and still not necessarily have to foul us until we can run a little more clock and get the clock down to where, you know, about a minute left. Then they're going to be forced to, but still a long way to go till we get to that point. 50, minute 37 50, 50, 50. for this team has seemed like an entire quarter at times this year for us. 51-46, Tigers lead and have led most of the game. They they, they, uh, they got the lead right after uh, Gentry scored the first basket, three, a yep. three-pointer, and then we held the lead and they took a 30-28 to lead. We went on yep. a 12-0 run to take a 10-point lead. That's been our largest lead. We've had it a couple of times. It's only five right now, a minute 37 to go. Tigers up by five. Tigers still with two timeouts, so if we get caught in a bad situation, players need to be aware that they can call a timeout. Gentry with just one timeout left. And we get it. Oh, there he is. There and we go. Oh, yes. I was going to kill Dylan for not using the backboard <laughs> right there. <laughs> well, at first, I thought he was going up for a dunk, Lenny. If he had gone for a dunk, missing, Can you imagine that? would have had a fit. <laughs> this is a big free throw you get, and you need these free throws. Well, you want, you want to keep this at a three-possession game, and that's where it is right now. But what you'd ideally like to do is make Gentry run some clock before they score. Gentry's just attacked us defensively. Oh boy, Dylan, 13 points for Dylan tonight. Tigers 15 out of 21 at the free throw line. We're under a minute and a half to go in the game. Whoa. Barker. Good defense by Smith. He actually, he actually could have shot. No good. Good defense. Sainer with the big rebound, and there's Heltimus. Heltimus with a chance, take your time. There we go, That's there we go, there the we Tigers. go. With a minute and nine seconds to go, 56-46. We're down to a minute, Derek. Great rebound by Sainer, great outlet pass, and nice job by Gavin. Oh. And they're going to call that on Big Sainer, I believe. Yep. Sainer picks up his fourth foul with 101 to go. Derek, we're one minute away from making a return trip to the region. One minute away, Lynn. You're still not comfortable yet. No. Nope. This has been your theme all year. <laughs> Never comfortable, comfortable <laughs> until we see triple zeros on the scoreboard. And here is the first free throw made. It is good by Cripps. Gentry, I'll tell you what, Derek. I, you know, when we played them the first time, I was like, how, how, did, they, how did they beat? P Ridge. P Ridge, yeah. And now I see it. I mean, they're they're a solid basketball team. Well, they, they ran Gravit out of the gym. I heard the final score was not as close as what it ended thing, up yeah. last night. So Gentry definitely played a lot better down the stretch. Looks like it, the Tigers are going to find a way to win this ball game. We're not out of the woods yet with a minute left. Three possession game with a minute. Got to handle this pressure. Still got timeouts if you need them. Oh, and luckily, <laughs> one minute exactly. Cripps did a nice job at yeah, time defensively. Yeah. I don't know if we got a quarterback on the team, but if we do, oh, here he comes. <laughs> if we had a quarterback, there's our tight end. He was wide open down the field. <laughs> and now Heltem has got, has got it, and we got it over the timeline. Now Heltem has pulls it out. Now Gentry's got to come foul us. Yeah, Gentry's got to come foul. Fifty-six seconds to go in the game. Prairie Grove up by eight points. Fifty-six forty-eight. There had been a big score in second half. It was twenty. Yeah. Twenty-one fourteen at half. Yeah. We put up thirty-five points and counting. Thirty-six. Gavin Heltem is ten points off the bench. He has played a phenomenal game for the Tigers. Well, we'll go through the scoring. Right now. I think for the second time in a row, our Everett Chevrolet player game 
Tanner Purcell, not just his leading scorer, and he's got a lot of key rebounds. He's made a lot of assists and is our Everett Chevrolet player of the game. Really, Lynn, we haven't had a guy on the floor play a bad ball game tonight. Everybody has stepped up their game, weathered the storm that Gentry presented for us. Three-pointer, and there's nice Heltzmus job. for the rebound. Heltimus. He's going to get fouled by Cripps. I think that fourth foul on Cripps, I think. Heltzmus going to go to the line and try to add this point total here. He needs to – our biggest lead, Derek, has been <laughs> – has been uh, ten? 10 points. <laughs> Can't we get got a pass chance. That. Yep. There's a chance. Heltimus makes it. And, you know, if Prairie Grove ends up winning by double digits, this game was much closer. Than, sure, yeah. You know, you're saying the game the last night through. may have been a little yeah. wider in margin for Gentry. This is this is one that has felt close throughout. And for the first time, Prairie Grove gets past 10 point lead. They're up by 11, 59 48. 40 seconds to go. I think Gentry's legs have failed him just a little bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, and there's <laughs> the average Chevrolet player of the game just went in and swatted one here. Yeah, it, reinforcing that call by you. Uh, this is going to be the challenge for us, Lynn, is we got to turn around tomorrow night and play P. Ridge. P. Ridge has been off all week, so they're going to have fresh legs. Well, Derek, and I'll, it looks like we're going to hang on to the victory here. And now, you know, some of these seniors for Gentry, like Barker, and uh, you know he's he's finishing up today. And well, and I, I'll tell you this, Lynn. I want to talk about the Tigers too. But Gentry, th this team, this program, I think they went a couple years in a row. They didn't win a game their entire season. These kids have stuck it out, played hard. But you got to give the Tigers credit too for finding a way to win. Beating a team three times in a season is hard to do, yeah. and the Tigers came out and did that tonight. And when it looked a little iffy, we made the plays played composed basketball through the final four quarters. And that's going to do it. Prairie Grove will go to the regional tournament, and they'll at a minimum go as a three seed, Derek. That's right. And so well, unless Shiloh upsets P. Ridge. That's true. That's but true. but yep. more than likely a uh, three or, seed or at the least. Uh, Huntsville. Uh, Huntsville, I'm yeah. sorry. Or, yeah. And, yeah. and if it's Shiloh, it may not be Shiloh. Could be Lincoln. They play, Lincoln. Later yep. yep. they play later on tonight. Yeah, they play later on tonight. Good way to finish the ball game. Another trip to the regional tournament for the Tigers. And the Lady Tigers will be playing next week as well. Both teams play tomorrow night. Lynn. Yep, so tomorrow night. Let's go through the stats there. Okay. We'll talk about tomorrow night and call it, a, uh, call it an evening. Tigers shot uh, 72%, and I did that in my head from the free throw line, Lynn. So not bad. 18 out of 25, if my math is correct. Sainer with 13 points. Purcell with 22 Galligan with six, DJ Strong with three, Nick Ellis with three, Heltimus 12 big points off the bench, and for Gentry leading the way for them was Cripps. He ended up with 13 points, Gillerat with 12 points. Those were only two guys in double figures for the Pioneers. Well, that's going to do it again. Let's see, with Sean Oaks, Ethan Sam, Christian Dowdy, and Miles Lowe helping us on the East Lab crew tonight. Derek, tomorrow night it will be Prairie Grove versus uh, Berryville in the girls game at 7 o'clock. Then Prairie Grove versus P. Ridge. After that at 8.30, we'll be back to back with you for the games tomorrow night. For our East Lab students, Derek Dugan, I'm Lynn Gregson. Thank you and have a great night.